Greetings, Stars fans. This is the Two Brothers Mic'd Up show. If you didn't know, we sit down after each and every Stars game. We talk about the previous game. This being game 43 versus the Winnipeg Jets. We're going to sit down, play a little game of NHL, talk about what we saw in the game. So, the Stars win 2-1 to one in the shootout. But let's go into the predictions that we start off each video with from the uh, previous video. So always stick around for those to see what kind of scores were given out for the game. Quinn, you like to score a 4-3 to three if the Dallas Stars are going to win. But you also like to score a 4-3 to three if the Jets were going to win. You thought, you know, it'd be kind of a... E even game either way, which I mean it kind of was. Uh, I like to score a five to two for the stars. I I was expecting a big bounce back game with maybe a lot of energy with the uh, home crowd, you know, get a little home cooking going. But you know, it wound up turning into a low score affair. If the Jets were going to win, I like to score a three to nothing. Now I don't really know much about their backup uh, goaltenders, so. I guess that didn't really work into uh, the favor of that, but you know the the buff, the Winnipeg Jets actually tend to not score a lot of goals, and they didn't do it in this goal or in this game. But let's go down with the scores of the game. We have Tyler Sagan in the first period, and then we have Perot in the second period. And then it goes all the way through the third period. And then we go into overtime. And then we go to a shootout. Your goal scorers are Tyler Sagan, Patrick Sharp, and Andrew Ladd. The, the misses were from Wheeler, Ben, and Little. All really good... Uh, players to have out there for your shootout I figured it might have been a little bit more of a shootout for those uh, six but you know the backup goaltender for the Winnipeg Jets couldn't really stop much on them I mean Jamie if Jamie hits the net on his shot that's a goal but let's start and talk about the beginning of the game we see Kari Lettinen coming in net Let's talk about, uh, Quinn, your thoughts, how the Stars played, and if you liked the start for Kari over Niemi. I definitely agree with uh, having Kari come into this game. It seemed kind of like the right move. You know, you just had both goaltenders coming off, giving up six goals. So it was nice to give Niemi a little rest, bring Kari back in, and it paid off. You know, he played stellar. Uh, with what he was given, and he put the door down. Yeah, we definitely saw Kari back into good form. You know, it, it, it's it's always worrisome whenever I see Kari getting the start because we just don't know which Kari we're going to see. And I think that's always the 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 wild card with a game now. And it, it pains me to say that because Kari, you know, he became such a fan favorite here with him replacing Turco and him doing, you know, relatively well. Um, and then had that one stellar season where we go to the playoffs. But now, you know, it, it, it takes a little bit of time for uh, the fans to really start noticing that Carr is not just the same as we've been seeing, and he's been up and down this season too. I honestly expected a, a real big bounce back year for Kari. And although he does have, you know, more wins than losses by a outstanding number, but it's it's only the because whenever he's bad, he gets pulled and Niemi has to take the loss. So I've always thought that was a bit unfair to Niemi, how he has to burden the uh, the losses for this team. But we, we saw a good Kari, and a good Kari game is what he needed, especially in the home crowd. But does do you think Kari can build off of this? 
I honestly feel that we should like we shouldn't take too much into this. That we should probably start in the NBA next game. I, I I've noticed a pattern like you know we start a goalie, they get a good game, then they come out and they play a bad game. I think we should just keep alternating until both goalies are showing that they're both confident again, they're both putting up good numbers. And then, you know, get this one A, one B thing going again. So you think uh you know, let let a goalie have his game and then let the only go let the other goalie come in no matter how the uh the effort went. Exactly. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I do I do think Niemi should start against uh Minnesota. He I think he th- it's a big game. I mean the the Winnipeg game was a big game. Don't get me wrong. And you know, I want I want Niemi in the big games. I don't want Kari in the big games. I want Kari to face you know your uh your Edmontons, your your Carolinas, you know, games like that. You know, something that you know, he needs to come in and play really well. Granted, he didn't play well against Carolina and got pulled, but I, I still think those are the the games that he needs to come in and play. Overall, I, I liked how he played. I'm still not sold on him being, you know, fixed or him having his confidence, but... I liked I liked seeing uh, a good car game overall. It's it, it's it's refreshing to see that you know you didn't have to come in and sit through a disaster that Niemi has to mop up. Let's talk about the the pace of the game, the energy. So the Stars return back home from New York. How did you like or did you think the Stars brought energy to this game that they were obviously lacking in the New York trip. I felt they brought in a new rejuvenated energy. I wouldn't say that they're back to their old form that we saw at the beginning of the season. I still think, you know, there's still a little fatigue in the game, but an overall performance that they kept up with Winnipeg and that was great to see. Yeah. I I thought I thought there was energy to this game. I think you know being in front of the fans uh, helps a lot, and I, th- I I really think this was an adrenaline fueled game. It, it seemed like at times their tank was on full and they were burning high octane, but then sometimes it looked like they were just back to burning on fumes. It was it was an up and down effort from the the energy aspect but you know what the the stars hung in there and the stars actually got beat in like every uh every uh statistical battle you know they were outshot they had the most penalties they were out hit by a uh not a wide margin by like seven i think it was 24 to 17 but they had 15 giveaways they lost the takeaways from 11 to 9 but the faceoffs were even the the stars have been consistent in uh winning faceoffs which was nice to actually help keep possession with them so they're not like burning the as much gas or as much fuel as possible to retake um possession so that was that was good to see that they were able to really hang around in this game Let's talk about uh, their defense. How did you like their defense coming out in this game? And what what difference did you see out of this as opposed to what we were seeing on the road trip in New York? I felt the, the defense overall played a much better game, but we're still seeing problems um, with making a, a good pass out of the zone to to initiate the breakout. It seems that they're still trying to rush it just a little bit. They didn't do it as much in this game, which was good to see. But I would still like to see a little more improvement in that area. 
Yeah, I thought uh, I thought uh, Goligoski and Klingberg actually played a little better. I know you don't like Goligoski, but it, it didn't. They didn't seem as much of a liability out there that they did in the past uh, three games. Uh, let's talk about the Bin and Sagan split. They were put on different lines for the first time this season, and it actually works. Uh, like seven minutes in, eight minutes into the first period, we get a Tyler Sagan goal from a, uh, I don't, I wouldn't call it a sweet, uh, pass from Sharp, but, uh, it definitely got, he definitely got the pass out front to where Sagan was, um, and he extends, and Sharp extends his point streak to what now, 11 games? The longest in the NHL? Uh, and then we saw we actually saw the lines go back together in the third period because I, I honestly think that you know the the pace was starting to slow down and I think you needed to put them back together. I would have liked to have seen a full game of Ben and Sagan split up. Uh, take what you saw from the game and how did you like the the split up from Ben and Sagan and. You know, did the lines work, you know, to your liking? Uh, should they go back to it this next game? I mean, your thoughts on that? I I felt that uh, the split was good for this game. Like, like you, I would have liked to see it last for the entire game. I felt that once they were put back together, they kind of, I wouldn't say lacked motivation, but it, they kind of seemed to be getting it back into the same pattern. And you, you could see a little bit more point production coming out of uh, the, the lines, you know. They felt more solidified. But hopefully this will let uh, Ben and Sega know that they can be split up and they start playing good together again and we see them back to their old selves. Yeah, I did see uh, a little bit of those tendencies that we were seeing in, on the road trip uh, come back in to their play whenever they were back back to line. I hope I you know what I would like to see if that uh Sagan and Sharp and Yanmark magic could could hit again next game or maybe against uh I I don't know. I think the next game I'd like to see the same lineup combination that we had in this one because after the Minnesota game, I think they're on like a five day break. I mean, after Saturday, they don't play again until uh, Friday, I think. So I, I'd, I'd like to see what those lines can really do with 60 minutes, uh, especially since, you know, the, it'll be a second game. There'll be a little more familiarity to it. So I would like to see if, you know, they could really capture something. And to really give the top six a full-on, like, pound-for-pound, punch-for-punch thing, because you get two of the best forwards on two lines instead of just stacking that first line, I think it makes teams uh, gamble a little bit more on their line uh, line combinations and how they're going to fight the Stars. So I'd, I'd like to see how Minnesota would handle that, but I don't think... Uh, ben and Sagan are back, are split up for the Minnesota game because I think that game's just too important to not have your best players with your best players. Uh, let's talk. Actually, there was one other player besides uh, Sharp, which you know continues to be the best forward uh, by a mile. He. Uh, he, he's making plays, he's doing all the right things. His energy is non-stop. You never really see him tired. And a big proof of that is the, that, like, semi-breakaway move that he had in the third period, late in the third period, when he's on the left side boards, and he makes a move over towards the front to get that shot on their, on the, on the Winnipeg goalie. That, you know, it if he had only gotten a little bit of air under that puck, you know, the game doesn't go to overtime, it's 2-1, and Sharp gets himself a game winner on home ice. But another player that 
didn't really bring skill to the game. He brought physicality to the game, and that would be uh, Foxa. How how did you like? Because the first game that he was in, I think he only got like eight minutes of ice time. You know, wasn't a factor at all. And then the New York game. Uh, I don't really think he was all that big of a factor. Or did he play it? No, he didn't play in the New York game. He played in the Islanders game and was out. Or did he... He played in the Islanders game and the New York game? Or was it the Devils and then the Islanders game? You, you're you confusing me right now. I don't even know what you're trying to say. <laughs> I think he played it in the Devils and Islanders game and not the Rangers game, right? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it probably was the Islanders. I believe I believe I remember seeing Mo and Eve and Fizzer on the line. So I'm just gonna go with that. If I'm wrong, sorry. Let us know in the comments, uh, or you know, more than likely I'll be checking after the discussion. I know one game that he just wasn't a factor, and then another factor in the other game. And, you know, he was out of one of those games on the road trip. But here at home, he brought, a, like, another gear to his game and with the physicality because he had that huge hit on uh, Andrew Ladd. You know, Ladd is not uh, a tiny guy. Ladd is not a pushover. And with Foxa, you know, getting in and running him over like he did was a thing of beauty. You know, you go back and you can just you can watch that on on a loop and just see how pretty it was. You know, he he does you know go a little overboard with that boarding hit that he had in the third. And but overall, I I liked his game. I like what he brought. I think he was that spark plug that this team needed because we didn't see that from like a Roussel or anybody like that. I mean, Roussel was out there. Roussel was out there trying to make plays. And, you know, I think we we've, we've talked about how, you know, I, I would much rather like seeing Roussel get out there and really throw his body around because I think Roussel's passing game is a little weak right now. I think he needs to work on that. But Foxa was, Foxa was really in there. You know, turning it up, you know, giving everything he got. And I think it provided that, you know, essential energy late in the game or early in the period or whenever he was on the ice. You know, you could tell that the players were responding to his game. Uh, let's go into how would you like the overtime? You know, the, you know, Patrick Sharp gets that penalty. Oh, and actually... I, I added this up last video and I had still and I had saw that uh, 25 times that the stars take the first penalty now 26 games you know I hate when the stars take the first penalty and take all that momentum away from them that they have to spend killing uh, but they 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 take the first penalty in this game, but then you see Sharp take that uh, tripping penalty in the overtime. You know, I honestly thought it was like, oh, okay, this it's just another New Jersey game. You know, you know the Stars didn't didn't really have all that much energy um, in the overtime, and I gave and I give the the nod to Winnipeg, kind of edging out the Stars in that in that period I didn't really see the stars as being much of a threat in the overtime period but uh, going into overtime how did you feel what were you, what were your feelings uh, about the overtime period stars looked good you know they, they had a good outing until the penalty happened you know I feel like it was kind of a lazy penalty to take they probably could have played it a little bit better but you know that's just the luck of the draw yeah you know that uh, games like that 
you know, I, I honestly think that the refs were calling those those types of plays. But I honestly think Sharp deserved that penalty because, you know, he brings his stick down and essentially hits his skates. Um, there's really no way of getting around it. I, I thought it was a warranted penalty. So, you know, take that how it is. But we, we go into the shootout. And what were your feelings with the shootout? Were you nervous? Were you confident that the, you know, the stars were going to handle it? You know, what, what were you feeling at that moment once we got through that, that overtime? You know, there's a li- little bit of worry, but, you know, also the, that, that fans worry, but also knowing that your team can pull it off. So that's probably how, that, that's about how I felt. Mm. Yep, yeah, I'm pretty much the same way because, you know what, I think, uh, and we've heard people say this before, is that Kari seems to be the better one-on-one goalie than Niemi. I think I trust him more in the shootout than anybody else. So I, w- I was pretty confident, especially with the goal by Tyler Sagan. I think that set the tone for the whole time in the overtime. You know, he came down with confidence he shot it where he wanted it, and I, I, it, it. I think that put confidence into Kari because Kari knew that you know, all he needed to do was get, you know, one really good stop under his belt, and I think he has it. And I, and he did. And then you see Sharp make that beautiful move, uh, to seal the deal for Dallas. And then, well, you see the Winnipeg Jet player and Little hit the post, which was kind of scary, but. All around, it was, it was a win. It's what we needed to get off that three-game schneid. Stars are now four and zero oh in extra periods on home ice. So, take that as good news. Is that the stars weren't great in overtime last year on home ice? Let's go into the ratings of the game. What did you give for this one? I would, I would have to say, I'd give it a B minus. Mainly because the problems that we're seeing over the last couple of games, they're still present, and there's they're still hindering this team. The passing is is not getting any better. It's improving a smidge, but it's still hindering this team. If they could just improve their passing, this team would be back to scoring four to five goals a night without hesitating. They just need to work on their breakout more. Yeah, we're we're still seeing the little mistakes, but I I honestly think this team is just tired and needs to get past this Minnesota game to really get some good rest in them. I gave a rating of a B plus because I like the fact that the Stars just stuck with it. They stuck to their game plan even though they were getting beat in every single category there is. Kari held strong. You know, if this had been uh, a, a soft game for Kari, that game gets out of hand. But with Kari stepping up, Patrick Sharp continuing to still be the best player, I like to score. I like a rating of uh, B plus. Game forty four against the Minnesota Wild. What kind of predictions do you have for that one? I see them both coming out as a hard fought team. Hopefully Dallas uses this time to get in some rest, bring their A game, and if they can do that, I see him pulling off a win. Uh, we'll go four to two, and if Minnesota wins, I feel it's going to be five to three. All right. Uh, if Stars win. It's because they're riding this momentum that they have right now. You know, they don't slow down or they don't, you know, they maintain the speed that they are at right now. They don't slow down anymore. Uh, If Stars win, I think it's going to be a claw, scratch, bite, fight type of game. They're going to have to earn this one. I like a score of 3-1 to for Dallas. And if Minnesota comes in, I think it will be 
ugly. I like a score of four to one for the wild. That's the discussion. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, leave any kind of feedback that you like. Say what you liked, say what you didn't like. You know, help turn this into something big. We want to keep doing this for y'all because this is for fans, by fans. And as always, tune in next time.